Hey Scam the Lights and Says So Squad, this is Ashley with Ashley Says So and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video, but before we get started, I got a message from my sponsor girl, yeah! This video is brought to you by Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands, and I'm talking about thousands, child, of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. And since I am creative and curious, I took one of their classes, and this class was called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, taught by a guy named Marcus Brownlee. I love the way he broke everything down to the simplest detail. He also pushes his students to think and really fill your mind with ideas of what you want to do. And for my audience that are sitting there like, I don't want to do YouTube. Baby, that's not the only class they have. These people have lifestyle classes, productivity, even freelance entrepreneurship classes. You can chat with other members while you take your classes. You can connect with some of the popular teachers. That quality of making me feel involved and not like I'm just another number is one of the reasons why I signed up. I know for a fact that they care about me as a member because when it came to sponsoring this video I let them know just how much I care for my said so squad scandalite so uh somebody needs to come up off something and they came through when they offered one month free to the first 1,000 of my subscribers who go down in my description box and click the link and sign up for your account and y'all go on down there and click the link and sign up because it ain't no need to let one free month go to waste so go click the link and unlock your creative powers today still doing here I'm just kidding y'all we are actually about to get to the video but before we do I do want to let you know that I am not sure what's true or false in this video I am just here to bring the gossip from online and yesteryear and tell you guys a story and today we are going to talk about the very mysterious Donny Hathaway let's get to it oh 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 and new subscribers Hey y'all! Donnie Hathaway was born October the 1st, 1945 in Chicago, Illinois. His mother's name was Drusella Huntley and his father's name was unknown, or at least I couldn't find it. If you guys know that information, put it in the comments please. So by the fact that we don't even really know his father's name, it's pretty clear that Donnie's mother was a single mom and it seems like she was struggling when she was trying to raise him. So he was given to his grandmother who lived in St. Louis, Missouri and her name was Martha Cromwell. Well, that's what some people say. Other people say that her name was Martha Pitt. And Miss Martha Cromwell or Miss Martha Pitt was like most other grandmothers at that time. She loved going to church, stayed in church, day in, day out, every day, child, y'all know what it is, loved being in church. And while this would have bothered most other children, it did not bother little Dunny at all. As a matter of fact, it is said that one Sunday, he was sitting beside his mother at church and he was just fidgety and, you know, moving all around. And his mama was like, boy, stop moving, what's wrong with you? And Donnie was like, I wanna go up in the choir and sing with my grandma. And so they allowed him to do that. And at the age of three years old, Dunny Hathaway joined the church choir and he started playing piano. Now unlike other stars on this list where in their teen years they start doing drugs or breaking into cars or staying out all night, Dunny didn't do any of that. It seemed like his teenage life was very normal. He went to church, he went to school. As a matter of fact, not only did he go to school, he stayed in school and he graduated from Vashon High School in 1963. And even though I said that Dunny's teen life was regular, there was nothing dull about it, honey, because all through his teen years up until high school, he had been perfecting his musical skills. As a matter of fact, that is how he got into Howard University on a fine arts scholarship. And when he got to Howard, he fit on in with all the cool guys, you know what I'm saying? He became an alpha. He also started his own little jazz trio. And when he wasn't being the social man of the year, he was studying music, which was his major. And while Donnie was attending Howard, he was not the only musical prodigy there. Roberta Flack was also his classmate. And there probably were a couple of more musical prodigies there. But Donnie Hathaway outshined them all. He just had some serious talent when it came to music. And his reputation preceded him. So while he was still in college, he started receiving all type of job offers wanting him to join the music business. And at first, I don't think Donnie really took these job offers seriously. That is until 1967. Because in 1967, when he was supposed to be studying his music, he actually was studying this fine, brown-skinned young fox 
Rothschild and her name was Eulay Levan. And Eulay Levan, who was also at Howard to study music, saw Dunny Hathaway and thought he was a little bit more interested than her music lessons as well. And so they started dating and became the cute couple around campus. Y'all know what it is. And they eventually got married that same year of 1967. And once they got married, that is when Dunny started taking those job offers seriously because see, now he had a wife. And college was cool and stuff, but they weren't paying no bills. So he ended up reaching out and taking a job with Curtis Mayfield. And it was a good thing he did too because in the following years, his wife Eulayla gave birth to two daughters. And their names are Eulayla Daniel and Kenya Cantlieber. And actually, both of his daughters are singers, but the oldest daughter, Eulayla, who goes by the name of Layla Hathaway, is the more popular or more famous singer. So now let's get into Dunny's career. As I said before, he is now working with Curtis Mayfield, and Curtis Mayfield recognizes that Dunny Hathaway is a musical genius, pretty much. This guy has so much talent, and there are so many things that he can do to change the music business. And because Dunny is so talented, not only is he working for Curtis Mayfield as a session musician, I believe, with Curtis Mayfield, I'm not sure, but I do know for sure that he was a session musician for Chess Records. So as you can see, his name was getting around. Everybody wanted to know the kid, Dunny Hathaway. And the great thing about Dunny signing on to work with Curtis Mayfield is that Curtis Mayfield recognized his talent. And instead of trying to keep him under wraps or keep him with him, Curtis Mayfield was like, hey, no, this guy needs to be out doing his own thing. This guy needs to be signed to somebody because he can shoot for the stars. And I'm not going to stop that. So Curtis Mayfield started to shop Dunny Hathaway around, trying to find somebody to sign him. And they did not have to wait long. Jerry Wexler, who was a partner for Atlantic, also who was a person that had worked with uh, Aretha Franklin, Stevie Wonder, and other greats like that, heard Dunny Hathaway and was like, hey, listen, we need to get him signed. And although Dunny did not sign directly with Atlantic, he did sign with a division of Atlantic. Atlantic called Atco. And when he got to Atco, he showed his tail. He showed out and did what he needed to do. As a matter of fact, he did so well that Jerry Wexler said himself that, hey, this guy was my third genius. I already had Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin. Those two were my first two geniuses, but this guy was my third genius. So Jerry, as well as everybody else, just knew for a fact that Dunny Hathaway was going to blow. So soon after Dunny signed, the first song that he did that made a lot of noise was called called The Ghetto. The song did very well. People loved that song, especially people living in the ghetto because they said the ghetto gave them a sense of pride. It was a different look at the ghetto. Instead of looking at the ghetto like everything is bad, it actually made you feel good to come from the ghetto. And Dunny himself said he put a lot of heart and soul into that song. As a matter of fact, Dunny put a lot of heart and soul into all of his music. So everybody agreed that the song The Ghetto was a great song, you know, a marvelous song, and it was. But child, let me tell you, when the sweetness came in, baby, when Donnie started doing duets with Roberta Flack, ooh, child, they set the charts on fire. It was beautiful, beautiful music. They were so successful that even Aretha started getting upset. She threatened Atlantic like, hey, y'all need to do something. This Roberta Flack lady, I do not like how much attention you guys are giving her because you guys are not focused on me, your queen. And that's a rumor right there that I do believe because y'all know that we love our Auntie Riri, but y'all also know how she could get. But, eh, Time to stop and drop some tea right here, hun. And to be honest with you, this tea that I am about to drop has been out for forever. And that is that Roberta Flack and Dunny Hathaway had something going on. Child, these folks is out here saying that Dunny and Roberta will be in the studio singing it up, singing it up. Leaving the studio and knocking the boots, honey. Baby, they said it was all kind of bouncing going on after them recorded sessions. Thing is, though, Roberta and Donnie suddenly stopped dealing with each other, just like out of the blue. And some people say it was a huge argument that brought this on. And they say the reason of the argument was one of two things. The first rumor is that Roberta was upset that Donnie wouldn't leave you, Layla. You know, she wanted more out of the relationship and Donnie would not give that to her. The second reason is that they both were just arrogant. They both had these huge egos and felt like, you know, they were the best 
best singer or they knew what to do for the record and tried to tell each other what to do with each other's voice. You know, basically tried to dictate everything, both of them. So they clashed and had a huge argument. And the third reason, I'm sorry, I know I said it was two reasons, but there's three reasons. And the third reason is that apparently Dunny Hathaway just started changing, just started acting crazy, you know, had an attitude, talking to Roberta any type of way. And finally, Roberta was like, hey, I'm not going to deal with this. But Roberta or nobody else didn't know it yet, but those changes that Dunny Hathaway had when he was acting kind of weird, that was just the beginning of a bunch of changes that were about to take place. But before we get into that, let's talk about the time that Donnie's genius really shined through. So you know how I told you that he was like an expert with this music thing? He had all kind of talents. Well, one of those talents is Donnie Hathaway could just hear somebody singing a cappella, you know, singing by themselves with no music. La, 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 or something. Well, I, that ain't it. But y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody just singing by themselves with no music. He could hear that and he could form a whole symphony or a whole musical arrangement around just their voice. And I'm talking about by himself with no help. This man really was one of the musical greats. And one of the best examples of him doing this is when he was around Nadine McKinner. And Nadine was just singing, you know, this Christmas will be a very special Christmas for me. Y'all know I had to sing it. Come on now, Dunny. But anyways, Nadine was just sitting there singing that. Acapella, no music. And all of a sudden, Dunny comes up with dun -dun 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 Yeah! <laughs> That's my part, y'all. I'm sorry I got excited. That is my part. You hear me? Baby, that dun -dun 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 That makes the song to me. And let me add one more thing about that song. Because, see, you can hear that song in 1990, in 2008, in 1974. No matter what era you hear that song in, it sounds like that song just came out. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave the song link in my top comment. Go listen to the song and just listen to the music and tell me that song doesn't sound like a Neo Soul song that could be released today, right now in 2021. So the song was legendary and everybody knows that after a person makes a legendary hit like that, everybody wants a piece of that person. So all of a sudden, Dunny Hathaway's phone starts ringing off the hook. You know, did it ding, Mr. Hathaway, can you do this? Did it ding, Mr. Hathaway, can you sing that? But one of those phone calls came in and was like Ding -ding, Mr. Hathaway we have a new TV show coming out and we want you to sing the theme song next thing you know and then came on Yes, Dunny Hathaway sang the theme song for the TV show, Ma. Now, with all of that information, you can see how large this Christmas is. And it really was the basic step, the basis for Dunny to shoot up to superstardom. And after the song hit, people were expecting him to shoot up to superstardom. He was now going to be looked at, they thought, like Aretha Franklin and Stevie Wonder. All he had to do was stay on that energy level, you know, that level of greatness and keep recording the hits. But unfortunately, suddenly something horrible happened, y'all. Child, listen to this. Dunny and his friends ended up going out to eat, okay? So they're sitting at the table just eating and a woman walks by. So, you know, Dunny turns around and looks at her and he's probably just staring and he's probably smirking and the woman probably smirking back. You know, she thinking she all cute. And suddenly Dunny says, hey, you need to go home and take care of your kids. What you doing out here? You need to go home and take care of your kids. And his friends are mortified because they don't know this woman. This woman is a stranger. She's never talked to them a day in their life. So his friends are like, man, what is wrong with you? And the woman, you know she was embarrassed and her reaction is not recorded, but I can imagine it was probably like, uh, don't do me, sir. And then she probably picked up her stuff and ran out and dropped her ticket on their table so they can pay it. Because, um, sir, you doing too much. You got me leaving because I'm embarrassed. So guess what? You need to pay for this food. And of course, that's all just a little bit of my say-so. Nobody really knows what went on but I do know that after this happened Donnie never truly acted normal again his behavior started to get more and more erratic like they would notice him in the studio talking to himself or just sitting and staring sometimes just staring out the space and then also let's say it's like a drum set in the studio you know what I'm saying the drum set right here my hand okay this Donnie You know, acting like it's something he never seen before, just acting really outright strange. And the thing is, a lot of when this stuff started or started to get noticed the way it did, Donnie was away from his family. He was not at home with his wife and children a lot. He was around his band or other musicians. So when he did get with his wife, she was surprised by it and she called his manager and she's like, hey, have y'all noticed Donnie acting like this? And they're like, yeah, but you know, it ain't that bad. He's just acting kind of weird. And his wife was like, so nobody called to 
get him help. Nobody did anything. And they were like, no. So she was furious. And she took her husband to see a doctor to see what was wrong with him. And when they got there, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. And as soon as he was diagnosed, Donnie did well by taking his medicine and getting better. But the problem was is that once he got better, he stopped taking his medicine because he felt like, oh, well, you know, that was a weird stage in my life, but that's over now. So I'm all better. But unfortunately, that is not the way schizophrenia works. So when he did stop taking his medicine, believing he was better, he was better for a little while, but then he got a lot worse. And his wife would catch him acting really strange around the house, or she, as well as his bandmates, called him a couple of times, staring at the TV with static on the TV. There was nothing there, but Donnie felt like people were in the TV. He also felt like these people were talking to him. You know, he was communicating back and forth with somebody on the static TV, even though nobody else could see these people and quite frankly it got worse from here and Donnie which I failed to tell you guys before had already suffered with depression okay in his adult years he had already suffered with depression so now you have that depression as well as this schizophrenia and it was just bad he suffered the people around him suffered but worst of all his music suffered and he pulled away from his music he became very despondent and you have to see it from his point of view okay this is a man that is musically talented he is gifted this stuff comes to him naturally. So when he's trying to work on his music or his songs or his sounds and he's having to work harder at it or he's struggling and things are just not coming together like they used to, this is making him very upset, very sad because it's almost like, you know, God, my God-given gift, where is it? What is happening to me? And like I said, he became very despondent. He pulled away from everybody. He even left the music business completely. And not only did he leave the music business, he left his wife and his daughter. And if I'm not mistaken, it's nothing that she did. In fact, it is said that she pretty much tried to keep him in the hospital as much as she could until he got well. So again, I don't think it was anything that she really did. I just think that Donnie maybe just wanted to get away from everybody. I think he thought nobody understood him. So like I stated, Donnie pulls away from everybody. He pulls away from his family, his friends. He leaves music. He goes on an hiatus. And while he's on this hiatus, he actually meets another lady and he ends up having a daughter with her. And this daughter's name is Danita Hathaway and I don't know much about her mother but I do know that it is rumored that Donnie met her mother in a mental hospital but I just cannot believe this you guys because while I was researching and looking this up the person that stated that well on the gossip column that I looked at the person that stated that said you know Donnie Hathaway met this lady at a mental hospital and they said it as a fact but then when people came up under them and started questioning them like how do you know you know what information do you have they gonna sit up there and say I just know you can tell because of her eyebrows look at her eyebrows and the way she do her makeup you can tell she was a mental patient listen I'm not doing this People are messy, so just take that with a grain of salt, but that rumor is out there that he met this lady in a mental hospital. And while that is messy, ain't nothing messier than the tea I'm about to drop right now, honey. Because listen, child, it is a community of people in Washington, D.C. that is saying that Dunny Hathaway was depressed most of his adult life and he pulled away from everybody in his family because Dunny Hathaway was actually a gay man. And yes, the community saying this was the gay community around that time. There are several people apparently that had dealings with Dunny Hathaway. Now I'm not saying these dealings were of a sexual nature. I'm just saying that there are several gay people from the DC community that claim to have had conversations with Dunny Hathaway. And apparently Dunny Hathaway told several people that he was gay. You know what I mean? He tried to pray the gay away. He tried to do different things but it would not leave him alone. So this made him depressed because he could not be the man that he truly wanted to be and live the lifestyle that he was truly comfortable with. He didn't feel like people would support him if they knew that he was gay. So that right there is definitely a T-bomb. It's definitely a rumor because I have no idea if that is true. What I do know is true though is that during this hiatus, Donnie's mental illness became way way worse. Baby, Donnie started telling almost anybody that would listen that the mob was after him and that it was people trying to kill him. He also started to say that people were reading his thoughts and you know he started to hear voices. And one of the saddest things about all of this is that Donnie a lot of the time was suffering alone because he had pulled back from everybody. So can you imagine like if these rumors are true, you know what I'm saying? Can you imagine a man that's depressed, uh, got schizophrenia, also is dealing with being a closeted gay, just all of this stuff, that is 
a lot. That is a lot on a person. And Donnie, instead of seeking help or instead of seeking people to be around, just pulled back more and more. He was by himself. He was just going from hotel to hotel. And people rarely saw Donnie Hathaway. But when they did, it is reported that it was under very, very strange circumstances. So the year is 1974, 75, 76, just somewhere in that area. And people are walking downtown New York. You know, they're just walking downtown, minding their own business, and all of a sudden, they hear, Hey, y'all, you better get right. You know, get yourself together. Hey, sister, you over there? Woo! You know, just all kind of stuff, and they don't know what's going on. But when they look up, it's Dunny Hathaway leaning out of his hotel window, preaching and singing to people. Now, I don't know if he said what I just said, but they did say he was preaching and singing and just saying a bunch of garbled up stuff. So I tried to make that garbled up, you know, just saying different stuff. Because this is what he was doing, preaching and singing to people out on the street. And this was not a one-time thing. Allegedly, Dunny Hathaway did this so much that he got put out of several hotels after people complained that, listen, y'all got somebody up there fussing at me and preaching at me and telling me to get myself together. What is going on? Or his name would complain. So during his hiatus, although his family probably saw him a bit more than everybody else, the public rarely saw him. So when they did to see this, you know, they didn't know what to think. And then in 1978, something happened that surprised everybody. A song was released by Roberta Flack and Dunny Hathaway called The Closer I Get To You. And that song was another one of their smash hits. And you got to understand, when this happened, it was just out of the blue. Nobody had heard from Dunny Hathaway in years, especially the public. So they were like, okay, you know, we don't know what happened or why he's been gone, but he is back. They were very ecstatic because they were ready to support him, ready to throw their money at him. And on top of that, people were extremely happy about the possibility of Dunny Hathaway releasing more music. Everybody except his ex-wife, Eulayla. Because Eulayla understood that Dunny was not ready to get back into music. Dunny was not ready to record that Dunny still had very serious mental problems. But I do believe that when she voiced this to people, they kind of like, you know, just shrugged her off or I don't know if they thought she was hating. I don't know what they thought, but I do know that they did not listen to her and they welcomed Dunny back into their studios with arms open wide. But as much as everybody blew Eulayla off, that woman knew her ex-husband because she was right. Dunny was nowhere near ready to start recording and dealing with all of those different emotions and doing all of this hard work. And when he got back into the studio full time this time, it's rumored that this Dunny Hathaway is not really Dunny Hathaway at all. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he is Dunny Hathaway, but the way he's acting and behaving, even though he's acting happy... It's just not Dunny Hathaway. It's like a strange person, a different person. And at first, his session musicians or the people around him could not quite put their finger on it. But when Dunny started regaling them with stories about people he talked to in the TV or the people that were walking behind him and chasing him, they knew that Dunny was still very much sick. And it's also rumored that while these session musicians did feel bad for him, they were also a little bit afraid. And I understand that because I have had dealings with somebody that I know personally that has paranoid schizophrenia schizophrenia and you know sometimes they can scare you because they can perceive you as the enemy and then one day on january the 13th while dunny was in the studio preparing to start doing a duet album with roberta flack again he started saying man these white folks out to get me man they out to get me man somebody gotta help me man these white folks they didn't hook my brain up to a machine dude they trying to steal my sound they trying to steal my music man these white folks they trying to get me you know he started being very frantic so the session musicians are like oh, oh, oh let's go you know they closing down the piano lid and buckling up that guitar case and they're trying to get up out of there because they don't really know what's going on and so they call off the session and they're like listen we can't complete the session with this going on meanwhile while they're getting ready to go and doing all this Donnie is still like you know somebody has to help me these people are out to get me they are stealing stuff from my brain they're trying to steal my music he really believes this and he just cannot get himself together but in the end nobody truly listens to him and they also don't call him any help so Donny is once again alone to face his demons. And so he leaves the studio and he goes back to the hotel that he's staying at. And he goes up to his room on the 15th floor. When he gets in there, I am supposing he may be paced around the floor, you know. Or who knows, he could have been still frantic and, you know, nervous and scared and jumping around. 
nobody knows but i do know sometime during that night he goes to the window that is facing the street he removes the glass from the window and the next thing anybody ever said about dunny hathaway is that he was found dead on the street below seemingly due to a deliberate suicide they felt like he jumped out of the window but this is mysterious because like it's just so many different versions and rumors going on about this because like i said some people think he just like jumped other people think that there may have been some truth to what he was saying about people trying to kill him and thought that maybe he was pushed from the window and then you have the other set of people who knew that dunny hathaway had a habit of leaning out of hotel windows you know and then you have that rumor that he was leaning out to preach to folks and do all that kind of stuff so some people believe that that, that is what he was trying to do that night that he was leaning out the window to preach to somebody and lost his balance and fell out of the window there is countless gossip and conspiracy theories that surround this man's death i am not sure what to believe i can't lie to you i usually have a standpoint on stuff and y'all know i do child i always got to voice my opinion somewhere but on this one i really don't know i have no idea i will say that after his death jesse jackson fueled all type of rumors when he presided over dunny hathaway's funeral and he got up there saying you know well dunny hathaway when he fell out of that window he was fully dressed for the new york weather he had on his cap he had on his coat you know maybe even a scarf he was just basically fully dressed so jesse was saying he didn't understand why a man would be fully dressed for the weather and for the night just for him to commit suicide by jumping out of the window but what cha y'all know it's some tea on that baby because people were saying at the same time that they don't understand why jesse jackson had so much to say when he wasn't saying nothing when it was found out that he was messing with roberta flack right after dummy hathaway got finished messing with her so you know child the old hollywood streets is messy and it's about to get even messier than that why comments people out here saying that Roberta Flack was the cause of Dunny Hathaway's death? Baby, these folks is out here talking about this woman put a voodoo spell on that man to, I guess, make him either get schizophrenia or to make him fall out the window that night. I'm not sure. But whatever the case, there are some people out here that believe Roberta Flack did some type of voodoo spell and caused Dunny Hathaway to go insane and jump out of the window that night. I don't know like i said before any gossip and tea that i find i put it in these videos and we talk about them together in the comments just so we can figure out what is true what is not because i don't know but i will say this dunny hathaway's actual date of death was january the 13th 1979 and he was only 33 years old and we have come to the end of the old hollywood scandalous tale for mr dunny hathaway please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video i love you guys so much oh and i know i didn't do member shout outs on this video but that was because the beginning of this video was so long with everything else that was going on that i just left that out because i didn't want to waste any more time getting to the t however i will resume member shout outs on my next video thank you guys so much i love you have a great night